It's a world away from the classroom, but not everyone's cut out for school. These teenagers have all been in trouble for antisocial behaviour. Now they're getting the chance to learn in other ways, working on allotments on the edge of Brighton. Today's lesson: build a timber shed from scratch. You feel that you can learn things better in this sort of environment? Yeah, because there's smaller groups. Same with you, isn't it? Really? Yeah, smaller groups. And teachers ain't winding you up here, so treat you as adults, really. That's why I like it. Well, do it in front of that. Just dig like that flat straight. The scheme's been running for the last two years. The boys come twice a week. The youth leaders say the results are impressive, but they stress it's no soft option. We found that、um, the young people that do attend. Um, are more enthused about attending school because they're not. If they don't attend school and they don't go back to school, they're not allowed to join the allotment project. So that's one incentive. Also, a lot of the young people that are having having difficulty in school often behave much better here. I think it's more relaxed. They're not in a big classroom environment. It's a lot calmer, and I think we work quite differently、um, to the way that teachers are able to work. Before I didn't come here, I was bad, but now. When I come here, I'm gone better, better.、Yeah. Golden sweet heritage variety that we save the seed every year. It was Warren Carter who set up the Moorscombe Forest Garden and Wildlife Project way back in 1994. The site is bounded by housing estates, busy roads, and a railway line. But back-breaking work has turned it from a patch of overgrown waste ground into a green oasis and a model for environmental education. 14 years ago, half the allotments in Brighton were derelict. Now there's a two-year waiting list. When we started working in Moorscombe Primary School, that was the first environment garden that a primary school had had in Brighton. And now, nearly all primary schools have got environment gardens. They're talking about vocational training where children. Who aren't very good academically are actually very good with their hands working outside. So we sort of catch the vibe of the moment, really, with you know organic food, working outside, healthy living, all those things. We tick all those boxes. <laughs> Students Sophie Carlin and Nancy Walker first came here as part of a project for their anthropology course at Sussex University. They liked it so much they've been coming ever since. It's really nice having something different to do outside of university、um, that isn't to do with uni, but it's still to do with Brighton and it's still doing something productive. Warren teaches us everything, and he—it's really his place. You know, he kind of. Really tells you what to do and and teaches you about it, so it doesn't feel like there's a lot of pressure on you, kind of as an individual. In return for getting their hands dirty, volunteers get to take home some of the produce. It's all grown without pesticides or artificial fertilisers, so the allotments have become a haven for wildlife. But they're also a melting pot for people from many different backgrounds. This giant shed under construction will become a social centre and classroom. There's even an oven, hand built from clay, on the site to cook up communal feasts. All this has helped the scheme being named the best community allotment project in the country. In the 14 years since the project started, the volunteers have created a very special place, somewhere that people can come and grow their own food, reconnect with nature, and rediscover a sense of community. And at the end of the day, there's a chance to relax and to share the fruits of their labour. Real English strawberries. <laughs> Malcolm Shaw in Brighton for Meridian tonight.